Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to cover the Azure Durable Functions and this time it's going to be a little complex one. So we're going to talk about the fan out and fan in pattern. So in serverless computing, parallel processing is essential to handle a large workload very efficiently. This pattern called the fan out and fan in pattern that we're going to see that represents a popular approach for parallel processing. So it splits a single operation into multiple sub operation and executes that in parallel. And that is what we're going to see. Okay. And then what it will do, it will merge all the results to produce the final output. So what I'm going to show you is the real time example. And uh, we're going to call the real APIs and see how it works. And uh, come, let's get started. So to keep this complex example simple, what I'm going to do is this endpoint, right? So this is our uh, essential product API. So basically from our functions, we are going to create multiple function. So multiple function meaning each function will, will be invoking these endpoints. That's all these functions are called wrappers. Okay. So what we are going to do is we're going to call this category endpoint. And then once you read the last category ID, you're going to create a couple of categories and then save it. And then, which means you're going to call the post endpoint after that, again, read everything and then find out what was created through the function and call the delete endpoint. So in this one, we will be using the get endpoint, post endpoint, delete endpoint. Okay. And we will see how the parallel processing is happening. If you haven't done this Azure durable functions orchestration part, just right click on this function, add, click on add Azure functions. Whatever you're doing on this one is, is what you will do in the portal. It is easy to debug here. So I'm going to show you in the Visual Studio code, but you can do the same thing in the Azure portal as well. So let's say I name this as function. When this template comes, you choose durable function orchestration. So when you do that, there'll be a default template and then the template will show you a function which is called run orchestration and then an other function called the activity trigger. Okay, or multiple activity trigger functions. And then there's one more function called HTTP start. Now in this whole concept, HTTP start, they just named us HTTP start because this is an HTTP trigger function. This is the endpoint which is exposed. This one will call this function. This function is the orchestration part. This orchestrates which, which functions needs to be called, what has to be done, all the workflow. Workflow is written in this orchestration, okay? This is the triggering function. Now we don't need this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one and I already created this orchestration function. So let me go over what I created in this one. We have an HTTP client. Okay. A private variable. Now, like explained, we need important functions. One is the orchestration part, the function which orchestrates the workflow. Okay. So that's the workflow and we need one or more multiple activity trigger function. In our case, we have a function called a logging function, which just displays the input into the log. It's going to dump it. So it's just an example. This, this function is an activity trigger function. Each activity trigger function will have a name because this itself is a function. Now, what are the other functions that we have? So the other functions are other activity functions like save category function, delete category function, retrieve all the category function. So three different functions and each function is basically invoking the endpoint that we just spoke about. It is going to invoke that endpoint and it's going to perform that operation, delete operation or a get operation or a post operation. So basically this is a wrapper of our actual endpoint. Okay. Now one last important function is the exposed function, which is called HTTP start function. This will have an, an attribute called HTTP trigger. And the function level is anonymous, which means anyone can invoke this. If it was function level, then you need a key. If it is a function level, you need a key. If it is not a function, if it is an anonymous, anyone can do it. Admin means you still need a key. All right, let's keep it as anonymous for now. And it can be invoked through a get or a post. And one last important thing for the signature of this function is it should be a durable client and it should come from I durable orchestration client. That's it. Now let's go one by one. When this function is exposed, so when someone is invoking this function, we are going to use the starter 
and then we're going to start a new instance a new instance of our orchestration function once we start the new instance it will give us an instance id and then we will use the starter and then we'll wait for the instance to complete okay so wait for completion or create check status responsible response async this is the inbuilt method coming from the durable client okay so we wait for it now what happens i'm gonna put a break point here it goes all to this function the orchestration function orchestration is basically you are going to do a multiple work uh, which means you're going to perform a calling different different function each function is going to do different different activities and you're going to wait for all the results to come and finally you're done with that okay so that's a complex workflow right so in our case what we're going to do we are going to um, invoke a function called a log echo function first before that we will first use the context dot call activity async and then we will call a function called get all category activities if you see where is this method this method is nothing but a function a function which is here so this function what it is doing it is basically using the http client invoke the api get the response and return the response that's it it returns the categories okay so once you have the categories you get the last number of the category id and then just uh, i'm gonna put two which means two times it will loop through and it will create the two new category which is in turn it will call a function called save category function now once you are done with that we will wait for the results to finish like the task to finish after that we again call the get activities get categories we again call the get categories which means this time we will have the newly added items also okay once you have that dump it by calling another function and then we are going to pick up whatever we created and look through it and call the delete category so we are cleaning up whatever we created we will wait for it again call this one dump it so in this time we are calling this one multiple times we are calling this delete multiple times save multiple times we are going to do a bunch of work right so let's run this and see how it works all right great so once the application starts you can see all the available trigger functions are here http functions are here and all these activity functions are here so in our case our activity triggers are like get categories you know delete categories save category all these things are activity triggers okay so activity triggers you cannot trigger by yourself it has to be triggered through the uh, the orchestration only okay you cannot trigger it from anywhere else now in our case this is the end point that we are going to start so let's copy this open the postman go here replace this url it should be a post or get and then if i send hit okay as soon as i click on send it has hit our endpoints so let's debug this okay i'm going to click on send and then i'll show you what happens in the log you can see all this orchestration is happening here it started from this it invoked okay you can see here it's coming from here it started here it took all the information it dumped it after the dumps it started creating the the categories and then it dumped the newly created categories which you can see id number 15 and id number 14 okay now at the end you can see it deleted everything executing deleted statement and then finally dumped whatever was left out so long story short the Azure Durable functions are meant to have uh, Azure Durable functions are meant to create a complex workflow that's called orchestration and that is what we saw and I hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel, like it, share it, comment it and never forget to click on the bell icon.